Today we're carrying on with trigonometry. Uh, that's today's topic. And today's goal is to recognize when to use SOHCAHTOA, sine law or cosine law, to solve for sides or angles in triangles. This is section 6.7 in the McGraw-Hill-Ryerson textbook, Math Power 10. And we are looking at problems involving two right triangles. Sometimes we need to solve for more than one side of a triangle before we can solve for the value we are after. In the following triangles and the examples we're going to do, uh, you have a number of tools at your disposal. First, we have the angle sum of a triangle theorem, ASTT. We have the Pythagorean theorem. We have SOHCAHTOA. We have sine law and we have cosine law. But just how do we know which tool to use? So I'm going to go through each one of the tools and say what, what they're good for, starting with angle sum of a triangle theorem. To use angle sum of a triangle theorem, there's really only one time that you're going to want to do that, and that's if you have two angles in a triangle and you're looking to know the third angle, or you need to know the third angle. The Pythagorean theorem is kind of the same, only with sides, and you must have a right angle for it. The Pythagorean theorem you use if you know two sides in a right triangle, and that's very important, it has to be a right triangle, you need two sides in a right triangle, and you're looking to know uh, the third. The primary trig ratios also need a right triangle, and you can use SOHCAHTOA if you have a right triangle with two pieces of information in addition to the right angle. Then we can move away from the right angle triangles with our two laws, sine law and cosine law. Sine law you will use in the instance if you have an angle across from a side in a non-right triangle and one other piece of information, either an angle and you're solving for the side across from it or a side and you're solving from, for the angle across from it. And last but certainly not least, cosine law can be used in two instances when you have a non-right triangle. You can use a cosine law if you have all three sides in a non-right triangle and you need to find an angle, or if you have two sides and the angle in between them, like this case, you've got 12, 12 15, and some angle in between them, you have two sides and the angle in between them, then you can use cosine law to find the value of the third side. Looking at this example, we're asked to find AD in this triangle, and we're given a big triangle ABC where AD is the height of that triangle, and I'm going to put an H right here. The first thing we can notice is that if we need to, we can find any other angles in this triangle that we want to. Uh, Angle B down here is easily found by angle sum of a triangle theorem, and so is angle C down here. It's easily found by angle sum of a triangle theorem. And I'm going to use angle C in my calculations, um, and I might use angle B as well. So let's just go ahead and find these two angles. I know that angle C has to add with 25 degrees to make 90 because it's a right angle triangle and the other 90 is already made up in the right angle. So I can use ASTT and do 90 minus 25 degrees, which equals 65 for the angle sum of a triangle theorem. I can also find angle B down here, and sometimes it helps to find all of the angles in a triangle before you start, then you may, something may come to you. So this one down here, again, um, I know that this angle here has to go together with the 54 in order to make 90 degrees because the other 90 is made up in there. So this angle in here is gonna be 90 minus 54, which is, 36 degrees. So now that I have all the angles down there, um, we're going to go about trying to find the sides we need. Now the height is in the two right angle triangles, but I don't have a side in either of those right angle triangles. And in order to find a side, I need a side. So I'm going to need to either find AB so that I can use this uh, triangle ABD to find the height, or I need to find AC, and then I could use triangle ADC to find the height. 
Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and find side little b, or sorry, little c here. And we're going to do that with sine law. So I'm going to say using sine law in the big triangle ABC. Uh, we want to find little c, so I need to use little c and the sine of its opposite angle. Then opposite it is 65 degrees in that big triangle. And now I need an angle across from its opposite side. Well, the only other side I have is that 250. And its opposite side is this big angle in here, which if I add 54 and 25 together, I get 79. So I know that that big angle there across from 250 is the sign. We take the sign of 79 degrees. Now, one of the reasons that I use the version of sine law where I have the side on the top is because it's much easier to isolate the variable if I use the one that where the variable's on top. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the sine of 65. If I multiply this side by the sine of 65, it just cancels the denominator and I'm left with C. And if I multiply the other side by the sine of 65, I get 250 times the sine of 65 divided by the sine of 79. And when I punch that into my calculator, I get 230.818. So now that I know what that side is, I'm going to go ahead and mark that found number up here. This is 230. 0.818. And now I'm going to use triangle ABD since I have a side and I've got all the angles that I need there. I'm going to use this angle down here, angle B, and I'm trying to find the opposite side and I've been given the hypotenuse. Now the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to say using sine ratio, not sine law this time, but sine ratio in triangle, and the triangle we're looking at is ABD, triangle ABD. We know that the sine of 36 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite in this case is that H that we're trying to find and the hypotenuse is 230.818. To get H completely by itself I multiply both sides by the 230.818 so I get 230.818 times the sine of 36 and H is completely by itself on the other side. And now I'll just type that into my calculator. 230 times the sine of 36 degrees is 135.7 meters. And that is my value of H, which in the original question was AD. So I'm just going to put that in brackets. We found AD. Now moving along to example number two. Example number two has two right triangles in it as well. Uh, it has the great big white tri right triangle QRS and it's got the smaller right triangle TRS. And you'll notice that it's asking us to find QT, which is this here. I'm just going to put an X on it. It's asking us to find QT. And if you look at it, QT is actually the difference between this great big side and this little side here. So since it's the difference between those two things, if I can find how... Um, can find the length of QR and the length of TR, then I can just subtract the two to get X. So that's the first thing that I'm going to say is that we need to show that, or to notice that QT actually is what I get when I take QR 
and subtract TR. So I need to find QR and TR, and this time I'm going to actually continue to use Q, QT, QR, and TR um, to represent our sides. And I'm going to start by saying in triangle QRS, we're going to start with the great big one, in triangle QRS, dot, 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 QRS, the great big one, has this angle in here, which is 42 degrees, and it has this side, and I'm looking to find QR, which is this side over here. So QR is the side opposite that angle, and the side I'm given down here is the adjacent. And we all know that opposite and adjacent gives us the tan ratio. So I'm going to say in QRS, tan of 42 degrees equals that big side opposite, which is QR, divided by 25. And now I can just multiply both sides by 25 in order to get QR by itself. So let's actually show that here. Sometimes I show it, sometimes I don't. Now these two things cancel. So QR is simply 25 times the tan of 42. And if I plug that into my calculator, uh, I get 22.510 is the length of QR. Now I'm going to repeat that process in the smaller triangle. So now, now I'm going to go down to the small triangle. And I've got 33 degrees in that small triangle. TR is my opposite side, and this 25 is my adjacent side. And so I'm going to say in triangle uh, TRS, the tan of 33 degrees, and again, tan is opposite over adjacent, so that opposite is side TR. And the adjacent is 25. And once again, I'm going to multiply both sides by 25 to get that TR by itself. So I know that TR equals 25 times the tan of 33 degrees. And if I type that into my calculator, I get 16 point two, three, five, and that's going to equal TR. And now since QT equals QR minus TR, we can just subtract those two values. QR equals 22.510, subtract 16.235, and that gives us 6. Point three, and the units in this are centimeters. So we found the value that we were asked for. Our last example is a word problem. It says Ross measures the angle of elevation of an airplane to be 70 degrees. One minute later, the angle of elevation is 30 degrees. If the plane is known to cruise at an altitude of 10,000 meters, how far did it travel in that minute, and what is its cruising speed? So here we have a plane. We have, well, we have Ross. Ross is standing on the ground. We're going to put an R there to show that that's Ross. And he spots a plane. Up here. So that's Ross's line of sight, and he's spotting this airplane up here. And we're going to say that's the first time he spots, spots the airplane, so we're going to call it A1. And we're told that that's an angle of elevation of 70 degrees. Now he watches the plane for a little bit longer. And then takes an angle of elevation measure again.
up to the airplane. The airplane hasn't changed height at all, so it's still along that line. Uh, we're going to call it A2 because that's the second time he looks at the plane. And we know that this new angle of elevation uh, is only 30 degrees. And what we want to do is find the distance between A1 and A2. So we're going to have to fill in a little bit more here. Uh, I'm going to put in the height of the plane. So here's the height of the airplane. And I'm going to pull this across like that. And what we're actually being asked to find is this distance in here between A1 and A2. And I know that this is a right angle because vertical meets horizontal at a 90 degree angle. And I also know that the cruising speed of this plane was 10 kilometers. So I'm going to put 10 kilometers there for the altitude of the plane. Now this question is actually very much the same as the last question that we did because as you notice I've got the two right triangles and I've got this big side here. I'm going to call this H since that's the height of the plane up there. This big side here, H A2, is in the big right triangle and H A1 is in the small right triangle. Now because of the Z pattern here, see that nice big Z? I can put 70 degrees up here as well. And by the same measure, there's my other Z, I can put 30 degrees in here so that we actually have them in the triangle. And we're going to use um, the primary trig ratios in those two right triangles, uh, starting with the great big one. And notice that um, H, a2 subtract H, A1 is going to give me that distance that I need. So D is going to equal H, A2 subtract H, A1. So we're going to go through that now. Um, in triangle, H, a2, R, dot, dot, dot. Uh, I'm going to use this 30 degree angle here. And I know that um, we have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So we're looking at tan. So the tan of 30 degrees equals 10 kilometers over HA2. Now I can multiply both sides by HA2 and then divide both sides by the tan of 30. So I actually get HA2 equals 10 over the tan of 30, which gives us a value of 17.32. Now we're going to do the same thing in triangle H, uh, A1, R, in that small triangle. We have the tan of 70 degrees, and that's going to equal 10 over H, A1, which if we multiply by H, A1 and then divide by the tan 70, that tells me that H, A1 is going to equal 10 divided by a tan of 70 degrees. And that gives me 3.6. Um, let's have a couple more decimal places on that. Uh, four zero. And as we set up above, the distance we want is actually HA2 minus HA1. So HA2 was 17.32 minus 3.640, which gives us 13.68. And that is going to be in 
kilometers. That means that this plane traveled 13.68 kilometers in one minute. So if we want to figure out what that cruising speed is in kilometers per hour, um, we've got 13.68 over one minute is going to be something over 60 minutes. So to solve this ratio, we have to multiply by 60. So that means the plane was traveling 820.8 kilometers per hour. There was the cruising speed of the plane we were asked for. And that concludes our solving um, triangles with multiple right angles. Sorry, that concludes solving problems with multiple right triangles.